Hello there, welcome back to the Yellow Turbans Abridged. Last time we auto resolved a whole load of places. We just conquered tons of territory from Gonglan Shu, Sun Tzu, and Shi Hui. We encountered one difficult battle where enemy high level trash actually almost stopped us. Though we made it through, and now we've made it to a decisive battle, Sun Tzu and another army are engaging Jiang Kai and another of our armies. This battle is going to be one of the classic Total War weird ones though, because our reinforcements are behind the enemy, and the enemy's reinforcements are behind me. So this means unfortunately, that Sun Tzu with his better army will fight our inferior army right at the start of the battle. But still, nothing too much to sniff about, because at least Sun Tzu will be out of formation, I'm rushing him right away to attack him in his default deployment setup before everything's ready. And I think this really aggros the AI coming in as reinforcements, because they send their cab out ahead of everything to just charge us. Our front line is a load of spears, and look at that, the enemy cav just disappear in mere moments. The charge reflection is extremely powerful, and I guess the more powerful the cavalry charge, the more effective charge reflection is, because it's the damage of the unit doing the charging that gets applied. And in Sun Tzu's case, his cav are particularly good at charging, as we'll see in a moment. So with that, his cav just disappear as the fight starts. Then in come the rest of the infantry. Now I've got my army in a double line formation, so it's fine for me to just let the enemy plow into the front, and we'll let them do that and then start out flanking them with our second line. They did send one unit around the edge, just some peasants, so our people's warband will fight them, and now we'll get to work. I also have my archers shooting at Sun Tzu, who is stuck in amongst the melee. That's good both because he's not applying his powerful stats to the combat, and because he can't move very well and our archers are gradually killing him and then he actually routes, so that's a great start to the fight. Elsewhere, my cav are beginning the surround and pound maneuvers. There's a unit out there down that little hill that got taken out by my cav and now in they come to participate in the main fight. Some officers bodyguards there blocked our charge a bit but we just about got it off. And now we begin the rolling procedure. You just route units on the edge of the line, that frees up some of your melee stuff, and then we can go to uh, surround things already in the fight. I've still actually got my second line to use at this stage as well, just starting to do it. Sun Tzu is running away, and I did chase him to the edge of the map, but unfortunately I was unable to kill him or wound him as it probably would be. So he will escape with his life and his lives left over. Anyway, here we go with the proper surround and pound, getting the infantry around there to do the business. The cav just waiting for me to realize they're in position and then in they go for the big charge. There are plenty of saber troops here on the front line, so a cav charge to the rear just deletes the unit instantly. We charge all the way through to our own men. And now, as you might imagine, things spiral out of control until the enemy are just completely screwed and everything starts to rout. With that, Sun Tzu's army is beaten and part one of the fight is won just in time actually because part two starts immediately after that. Our reinforcements are now engaging the enemy's original army on the other side of the battlefield and here you can see me just starting to give orders to my men. I'm reforming the front line which was in the weird default formation. I want to reform it so that like in the first army it's all spears because the enemy are doing a similar tactic to Sun Tzu. They've got their cav just charging out ahead so we're going to go for the charge reflection. And we will see here that it's not quite as effective, and I think it's just because these men aren't in Sun Tzu's army, so don't quite get the same level of buffs. Sun Tzu provides loads of charge bonus buffs that presumably explains why these men survive for more than a microsecond upon making contact with our line, but they won't survive for more than, say, five seconds. So they're now gone and in comes everything else, including one of their generals who does the same thing, making the same mistake although he does charge into the Militia of Virtue, who are the least spearish unit in our spear line. They do still have the spear style charge reflection, even though they actually just have staffs. And they somehow managed to die, but they did also kill the officer at the same time, so that's all good. And we've got tons of cav now coming to attack the enemy's rear. In principle, our army that was victorious over Sun Tzu could come and do this as well, but there's just not going to be time in practical terms. The battles are too short, so we're going to deal with this army well before the rest of our guys can form up and start coming towards this side of the map. 
I noticed in the enemy's ranks they do have some endgame troops, these protectors of heaven, they're super heavy spearmen, even heavier than ours, or glaive troops I should say, they're wielding big naginata like things, can't remember what they're called. But they don't have enough of them, and you can see we've already got their main position surrounded and we're just raining arrows on their troops. Their army losses, morale penalty will easily come about because they've already lost a whole army on the field even before these units started fighting. And indeed, off they go. I'm going to have to chase things off the field because one of their officers was the unbreakable type, so the battle goes on. Here I spotted an unengaged unit of those Protectors of Heaven. This was a great chance to kill them as they routed, but it's just not that easy. Look at this, our Cav are just in amongst them. We've seen before that attacking units while they're moving is surprisingly ineffective. It doesn't really work for some reason. And here's a perfect example. <laughs> We're just failing to cut down this valuable unit because our men won't even attack in that circumstance. Anyway, some time later, everything is finally dead and we reach this point. It was a close victory, but only a technical close victory. We lost 10 to 20% of our men. The enemy lost like 90% and are devastated. We captured this guy. He does look like a smiley fellow. And I've said before, sometimes I let people survive if they're just smiling at me nicely. But in this case, gonna kill him just to add to the impact of the enemy's defeat. So their armies are looking nice and wrecked. They lost a couple of officers. Sun Tzu got away with things. However, he's just been defeated and will now be sitting around here. So I thought, well, we'll have the opportunity to go and attack him again. But if you look closely here, You'll see that he disappears. The army he was in is now led by someone else. I thought maybe the enemy recalled him or disbanded him to avoid him dying, which would have been very clever. But actually, there was some kind of random event where he fought in a duel with someone or other and got wounded and therefore despawned. This was a bit annoying because I thought maybe I could just fight him a couple of times and actually kill him right here. So now that he's wounded, he's disappeared and teleported home. And here, by the way, on this tooltip, we see that Sun Tzu gets plus 100 charge bonus on his cav, and that's why his cav just die if they run into your spears, because that plus 100 turns around and hits them. Very nice. Anyway, we are now going to have the issue that these armies will respawn in two turns if we don't kill them right away, so that's going to be our main priority. Sun Tzu's former army is annoyingly in these mountains on March start. It's going to be real hard to get to them, so it looks like they are going to be able to respawn. I'm trying to use my reinforcements to pursue, which is just so annoying because it's such a waste of our army and it's going to be really hard to catch up to them. But at least our two main armies can move on to continue what we were doing in the last part. We want to order resolve our way to great justice, so we destroy the remnants of the other Wu army and take this nearby territory. From this territory, we have a number of directions to go, actually. There are three different enemy territories bordering it. And there is the consideration that the Kingdom of Wu have an army to our east at Jiangsha. So I am going to send Jiang Kai to go in that direction in order to defend that general area and try to take down that army. And you may remember that last time there was an army in the south from Wu that I was running away from because I didn't really want to fight them. But then I got this decently advantageous situation. They were in March stance, we caught them, and I could just auto resolve them to death. Captured an officer, but he's got a toy dog, and I'm going to kill him over it because, I don't know, he wouldn't let me have it over my dead body, he said, and eventually we got it. With that, the south is now clear, and again, we'll go back to just charging forwards and taking as much territory as possible. In a very unusual twist, though, Shi Hui dares to resist my auto resolve advance. They've got some guys in this random settlement. And that means, on top of the pretty big garrison, we can't just auto resolve them to death. So I'm going to siege them out, and because the enemy have the advantage, they do just sally right away. Meaning we fight the same battle, but not in their settlement, which is good because I think those rice paddy settlements are the ones with towers. We saw something like that earlier in this campaign. So we'll have a field battle instead. I just sat there and waited for the enemy to show up, and you can see the enemy formation is a right shambles. The AI has gone crazy for this one. Looks like they're doing the old school Total War AI, where all the units advance using their own individual scripts, so it doesn't try to keep them in any sort of formation. You can see my plan, I'm just waiting for the enemy to get close. So hidden cavalry on both of the enemy's flanks can appear. A bit later, here we go, they've got all these exposed archer units because they're all totally out of formation. So we can just rampage about the place, killing them all. Their melee infantry has charged forwards to go participate in the fight with my melee inf. So we are all golden. 
With my melee imp, by the way, in this army, we have a revolutionary change to the structure. We've actually got some units. I've deigned to recruit some of our infantry units that aren't the trash spears or trash swords from the beginning of the game. So here we have these uh, Yushua or something they were called. They're one of our late game units or end game units right at the end of our tech tree. So we're finally sending them into battle. The problem we'll have is that they're low level. And as mentioned before, high level trash is really good. Their stats are similar to elite units. So low level elite units don't really do anything particularly remarkable, even in this case where we're fighting trash. At least my Cav are having a great time. As I said, they can't stop us just killing all of their archers and their strategists, their weak units at the back. So the enemy army is just going downtown. And eventually I commit some of the Cav to come join the main fight. And now they're going to be in even more trouble. I've already surrounded them with infantry. And here we can see examples of my elite swordsman just not doing very much to the enemy spear militia. I thought the enemy might just straight up die in a frontal battle, but they're really taking their time. Yes, I think it is just the level difference that messes up elite infantry. You need to have them for a long time before they get really strong and can take on experienced militia units. Here's another example of the same thing. At least in this case, the enemy are going to get army loss morale debuff, so they all route. We chase them off the field, and that will be the end of the battle. A decisive victory, no annoyance with towers had to be dealt with, just means we'll take this settlement a little bit slower than we otherwise would have if we just charged right a in for the assault straight away. Our next turn comes about, and we ought to resolve the survivors with an attacking battle to finish all of that off. So there we go, Shi Hui tried to stop us a little bit, but didn't quite work, and all our losses will just be reversed instantly thanks to our off-the-charts replenishment. I decided not to bother chasing down the remnants of Sun Tzu's army, because realistically, what are they going to do? Instead, I decided to use that force to defend, while the force that just took our new territory in the area will move west to take down a little pocket of enemy territory. We also got some bad news at the start of the next turn. Gong Sha Yuan, one of our veteran commanders who was in Gong Du's army, has died. And we don't have any spare officers, and that means that all of our troops get deleted as well. So our main army now is lacking one of its components. That's annoying. Would have liked to see them just be led by a captain or something instead for a while, or even give me the chance to just swap in an officer from somewhere else. So you definitely don't want to ever have an empty court in case someone dies, because you'll lose all your men as well. In this case, we can use the mercenary-ish thing where you hire a captain with a load of men just to fill out the ranks so that our army is still ready to go. We've got an army coming in from Lu Su in the east, that's what Jiang Kai is looking at, and another army from one Lady Wu in the south here, so our newly arrived force is going to set up an ambush to resist them. While we continue on with that offensive I mentioned, just want to take this rice paddy because then our territory will not have this little enclave of Kingdom of Wu on its edge. Just an auto resolve, tried to click on night battle but just about failed, I'm not very good with the misclicks. My mouse mat is literally a piece of cardboard, which is probably why I'm not very good at accurately clicking. And then, to add a bit of insult to injury there, I actually got a general from doing that fight, so just too late to save Gongsha Yuan's units from being deleted. Anyway, carrying on with some more auto resolves. Shu He is storming in to take this spice market from the Kingdom of Wu. This gives you an achievement with a mysterious message and we can see what they're getting at right now actually because we're going to take another spice market there are two right next to each other both controlled by the kingdom of wu and both auto resolvable so we take it and for doing this you'll see we get another achievement so in the game there are achievements for taking all but one of the spice markets on the map and an achievement for having them all so we've just picked up both at the same time with those two next to each other very nice there's actually a Han Empire territory in front of us now, so those two armies are going to split up. One will go and help out with the attack on Shi Hui, the other will move north where there is some more Kingdom of Wu territory to deal with. Then, in the Kingdom of Wu's turn, that army we saw sneaking up under Lady Wu is ambushed by our newly arrived force. However, we don't have the advantage because this army is brand new from us. Everything's level 1, so again, even though it has some elite late-gain troops, they're not very good, 
and the enemy does have good troops, even their mounted militia troops and a few of their generic saber troops have really high stats, some of them are maxed out with maximum attack values, so very dangerous units to be fielding, but might as well try and ambush them, so let's go down. To begin, we of course run at them from all sides as much as we can. The enemy do have plenty of units, so it will be another case where we can't quite lock all of them into combat right away. And unfortunately a case where we can't storm through and eliminate units right off the bat as we often do in ambushes. Like right here, my heavy swords just hit the enemy's spears and that's the end of that. Now they're locked in combat for the rest of the battle. And in other cases I try to do things like having our cav and lancer cav smash through sword units. It worked here and there but not overall, so we were unable to instantly free up a load of cav and start rampaging around the place. Even here I had some trouble, I attacked the enemy's repeating crossbows with swords, surely an easy time to win. But the enemy's crossbows kept moving around and as we already saw in this episode, when units move they become sort of invincible, so we couldn't kill them, our men just chased them around for ages. I think we did get them eventually though. Anyway, the bulk of the fight was really me just marvelling at how our men were really struggling against the enemy's infantry because of their high level. You can see me here looking at some of the stats, and in particular I had something, a theory I wanted to test, and that was that ambushes don't actually reduce the enemy's morale, and looking at the morale penalties currently being applied to some random unit there, that does indeed appear to be the case. I suspected it after previous ambushes. It didn't really feel like the enemy routed any faster compared to a field battle. And there actually isn't. Ambushing only gives you the advantage of positioning. There's no actual inherent surprise mechanic in the game. Here, I thought I had the enemy really pinned down by getting some archers right behind their spears and shooting into their backs, but the arrows are just sticking into them and they're not paying any attention. I guess the enemy's ranged toughness has been buffed and they're just tanking arrows at close range, even from powerful archer units like the Men of the Forest we have in this army, the upgrade of Yellow Turban Archers. A similar story occurs with our heavy swords. Just like the last time we saw them, they do struggle even against G Militia and it is just because these G Militia are powered up. These are uber G Militia. Here was a case where I was getting so confused at why I wasn't killing the enemy that I decided to actually check in the replay the stats of two particular units. And in particular we do see the enemy have double the attack of my heavy swords on their G Militia. That's why they're just mowing us down and why in one-on-one -on -one fights both sides are kind of losing the same amount of men. They have double our attack, but our guys, because they're an elite armoured unit, have double the enemy's defence, and it's kind of cancelling out. So, just a difficult battle. Because our units are dying, they're not getting freed up in these fights, so we can't do much in terms of manoeuvre and tactics. We have to hope we actually win somewhere. This is also a night battle, so the enemy have a morale penalty. Meaning if both sides just absolutely annihilate each other, then we'll technically win because the enemy will rout just before we do. We've already lost some units at this stage, but it's starting to turn. I do have some archers who I've had off fire at will, so I've saved their ammo to use in cases like this. So we can go and try to just absolutely focus fire a unit down. I've also started not fighting the enemy, in particular at the back of the enemy's column. They've got tons of their powered up saber troops and I'm just running away, like with this general here, trying to aggro troops, then just running off so that they're not killing us, that's the plan, and that works quite well. I also tried to take down the enemy commander, Lady Wu is wandering about in the woods. I've got some spears who have been ordered to attack her, but they're doing it in a very unenthusiastic way, they're just kind of strolling, maybe occasionally jogging, I don't know, maybe the trees are messing up the pathfinding because we just can't quite run after them for some reason. So yes. Now we just wait and see what happens in these fights. We are winning. As I said, the enemy will rout before we do. So while we're losing tons of men, the enemy rout and then they'll lose even more in the rout phase. So it will still be an advantageous battle. If we lose half of a unit but then the enemy rout, then you still technically kill twice as many enemies as you lose, if that makes sense. So it can still be fine even in slaughterous situations like this. Later, all of the enemy units chain rout but this is another case where they've got an unroutable officer, it was Lady Wu, I think, who had to gradually be killed with our surviving troops. Once all that sorted out, the battle ends in only a Pyrrhic victory. It really was a bloody one. You might have noticed, by the way, that was the first battle with the blood DLC thing you can get actually installed, so there were blood effects all over the place. We lost something like half of our troops, Lady Wu is dead, and the enemy lost lots of their high-level units, which is very nice. 
The thing is, while we lost half our men, as you might know, by this point in the campaign, my replenishment levels per turn are insane. They're roughly half on our elite armies, like Gongdu's old replenishment stat. It's not quite half for generic armies, like whoever that was. But it's something like a third. So that means at the start of the next turn, the army is at like 80-90% strength, even after a Pyrrhic victory. So basically our losses didn't matter at all, and it was all fine in the end, despite my complaints. And there we go, we go on to finish off that army, so all of those nice, high-level, experienced enemy units are gone forever. Now they'll have to re-recruit some trashier ones. And we are ready to push on. We'll take another turn of replenishment in a moment, and that army will then be in perfect condition. The only other threat in this area is the army that Lu Su is bringing over from Zheng Sha in the east. I'm moving Zhang Kai to try and intercept them, and to cut to the chase on this one because not really much happens. They walked in front of me, I quickly attacked them, had a small advantage on the balance bar, thought I'll just have that, not going to bother fighting them because, you know, we don't need to at this stage. With replenishment through the roof, we'll just kill them, we don't lose any units, and, you know, by the time Jiang Kai walks over to where the front line is, he'll be at perfect health once again. So we're saving everyone's time by just skipping through that fight. And now the front line is looking very clear. Huang Xiu is fighting Sun Tzu nearby, so that's going to provide a nice distraction. We're ready to go. It's time to charge on for more auto resolve action. And with this breakthrough, we are finally going to be able to get to the enemy capital, where we'll have a big showdown with Sun Tzu and a ton of elite troops.